Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So in today's video, we finally have part 3 of the Chapter 6 Apocrypha. Again, I do apologize for the delay in slowly playing through it. Um, the Broken Finger isn't healing nearly as uh, quickly as I would like, and so I, it is um, kind of putting a hamper on my gaming efforts. That being said, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I know most of you have finished it at this time, but um, this video, of course, is um, not only as a walkthrough, but I know some of you also don't really play nearly as regularly as you have in the past. And so, of course, you can still catch up on the storyline that way. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. So in this chapter, um, the main thing is uh, that are, there are actually three... I'll say three boss fights. Uh, one of them is, um, spoiler alert, uh, Yakimo versus, uh, alone versus a uh, large robot, in which case you're using the storyline Yakimo, even if you don't have Yakimo in any form. And I actually found that that was a little bit of a struggle. So definitely at the, um, each of the fights, I will, um, do some commentary there. So if you want to skip to the end, just forward to the uh, appropriate boss or bosses that you're having difficulty with and hopefully uh, my video will help you through that. Other than that, um, a reminder to kill off the horrors and some of the mobs in the areas which have dangers in it. Uh, you will need those materials to, um, I guess, create and upgrade some of the newest weapons available in the uh, weapon shop. Also, uh, you can't do the minigame after anymore. Uh, until you finish, I guess, the, either the true ending or something like that. At the end of this uh, you know, chapter, you do get some new characters. And so you can start doing some new um, you know, uh, minigames to kind of raise Yakimo's uh, ranking from level 3, which we ended off in the part 2, to level 2 and even level 1. I believe you get some specialized Grasta, which I believe is the KMS Almighty Power Grasta, when you get high enough in score. I haven't done that yet because I've just been going through the storyline, but uh, definitely when I do um, finish that, I will post a video as to my strategy for that. Other than that, not much else to do. There were a couple of, um, I guess, small hidden items. Uh, I also haven't finished the true ending yet. That will be in a separate video. So um, this is just mainly for the main story and any kind of small things I found, including a battery which fixed the um, broken purifier, you do get a couple of uh, luring shadow items in there, which will be in this video as well. Like most storyline videos, I'm going to stop talking now and let you watch the rest of the video in peace. Again, if you need some boss strategies, feel free to fast forward to the appropriate area. Thanks for watching and we'll see you a little bit later on in the video.
All right, we're back. So in this part of the uh, chapter, we will be using Yakumo alone in the storyline mode to take on um, a boss of sorts. Again, this strategy is obviously dependent on what you have picked in terms of your two previous choices in order to power uh, Yakumo up. In my case, as a reminder, I did pick for, I believe, guaranteed critical as well as increased um, MP stats. And so um, your strategy may differ depending on what you picked. Um, otherwise, I actually had to try this a few times. It wasn't nearly as easy as I would have thought for an automatic kind of uh, storyline uh, finish. And so um, I feel a little bit silly um, in losing so many times to what is supposed to be an automatic win. But I will say that uh, in my experience, the uh, storyline bosses, whatever they have been, is definitely a lot more difficult than they used to be in the past. So the battle starts and what you need to know mainly, and I realized this afterwards, is the boss does have one HP stopper at 50%. And if you use deletion too early on, you will have very little MP left, in which case you'll have one or no uh, two turns where you can't do any attacks. And you're just going to lose because you're just going to take lots of hits. The boss actually does a fair bit of damage. Um, I didn't take the physical and um, you know magic resistance, so that was a little bit silly on my part. That being said, note that I didn't activate deletion. I basically activated karma to give him mental focus, and then lunatic it up, and then cast a retribution. That brought it down to 50%, and then you just use one deletion to finish it up. All right, simple stuff, right? Again, I will stop talking now, and uh, we'll see you again at the second boss fight. Thanks for watching!
And again, we're back. So hopefully uh, those who have joined me at this point of the video um, learn a few things and hopefully my video does help you through this particular part of the uh, major trial. In this case, uh, one thing of note, don't have Yakumo in your main party in any of the fights where you do have to face off Yakumo in any form. There are two fights like that and so um, they are basically two iterations of this particular fight because time kind of warps backwards and you have to kind of approach it from two different ways. This is going to be the direct approach where you have to actually defeat Yakumo uh, completely. Yakumo does pack a pretty heavy punch and obviously this makes a lot of people who don't have Yakumo summon for Yakumo because in the storyline as well as in real life he is extremely powerful. So uh, don't bring your farming team, certainly bring your all out team. Note that this is on master level um, where you know everything's level 110 slash 120. If you are having fights, uh, difficulty fighting it, Remember that you can go back to the Pillars of Light in the Eret Village when you warp to the different chapters and set the difficulty a lot lower. You can go Expert, Veteran, or so on and so forth. Make things a lot easier for yourself. That being said, um, might as well take it down on Master. Um, I do have some overpowered units and we're going to use Scam versus Scam. Surprisingly, uh, Yakumo does def definitely have a long... Um, conversation with Aldo and Nona before the actual fight. I do find with most, I guess, stories, movies, and things like that, you know how the hero and the villain always have to have a long discussion before they start blasting each other to pieces. And this is no exception. Yakumo! Here we go! Any moment now. Alright, so the main thing you need to know is that Yakumo, of course, is a Shade user as well as a Magic user. You can see that I had Yakumo in the party and so I don't get to use Yakumo versus Yakumo, which I actually was really hoping to do. That being said, if you're not bringing a total scam team like Eevee uh, and so on and so forth, you will uh, or may have some trouble dealing with the damage. Um, definitely bring some dual debuffs. Obviously, Ify does have Rosa Liliac, which does have a dual debuff as well as Pain and Poison setting. Um, if you could bring in a Type Shield user or additional ways of decreasing int, that'd be great. Also, if you bring a physical team that has a different uh, physical uh, zone, such as a uh, Slash or Pierce or Blunt, that will obviously help mitigate magic damage by 30%. Other than that, um, the enemy doesn't have any weaknesses to note. So you can't exploit weakness using Ultra Shion. Again, I did bring an all magic team and so this is definitely not the way to go. I decided to keep this recording because I did beat it in the first try um, using, uh, again, Eevee. How, how do you not lose when using Eevee? Everyone essentially is a tank and most of, if not all of Yakumo's uh, attacks are AoEs. And so in the case of AoEs, you know that Eevee's minions will eat all the damage for you. Um, Yakumo does have two HP stoppers from what I remember. And so, doesn't matter how much you blast through, just make sure you set everything up for buffs, debuffs if you need to, refresh things like that. At this point, he will start countering with a massive amount of deletions and other things. And uh, there, it's called Soul Conversion here, but he starts attacking over and over and over again. He actually wiped out two of my parties here with... Um, you know, that had blood contract on it. And so if you are using an EP strategy, make sure you haven't lost your blood contract earlier on. Keep in mind that because I only started with two units up front, uh, other than EFI, Yakumo was supposed to be a third, but wasn't allowed in this fight. VCing in um, AS Chio does not give her a blood contract. And so we only did have the two. And you can definitely refresh that with her zone setting move, um, you know, if needed. That being said, there's a lot of conversation during the fight. And again, he does his soul conversion, the second HP stopper, and lots and lots of AoEs. Lots of deletions. And again, with uh, Blood Contract, really no problem. We also do have Minoka's um, buddy, Tetra, giving us shields and other things. So at each HP stopper, depending on how much damage you have, you will be facing multiple attacks that will wipe out two characters if you're not well prepared. 
Again, in my second fight where you'd actually have to do some more survival, um, you'll find that one a little bit more interesting because uh, there definitely is a lot more defensive play and you'll see a unit that we don't use very often either. Other than that, at this point, blasting through is really not the problem, right? It's just more survival than anything else. Other than that, I will show my loadout at the end of this particular fight after the conversation is done. And keep in mind, for those who are following, um, my loadout is the same for all three fights. So I will not necessarily stop and show you the loadout for each of them. Anyways, again, I will stop talking and see you at the next boss fight. Thanks for watching!
All right, welcome back. So um, we are going to be facing Yakumo versus uh, round two. And since we already know what's up, again, I decided to bring the same party just to kind of show you that Yakumo does leave the party. And um, the fight's going to be relatively challenging. However, this fight is more of a stall thing. You are not supposed to kill Yakumo. Now, let me know in the comments below if you wiped Yakumo what happens. Um, I followed the instructions and said, please stall and try to convince them otherwise. Uh, didn't really want to waste any time killing him, but although that would have been interesting, I'm sure if I did, I would just have to replay the scene. That being said, we are going to use a little bit of different strategy. Since we don't have to kill the fight, all we have to do is survive. And so at this point, having Tetra automatically gives us 30% type and physical shield considering that we are at less than 80% HP or uh, and then it, you get max HP and MP more not to mention Tetra of course heals at end of turn these buddies and sidekicks are ridiculously powerful and I do almost treat them like another uh, unit that kind of basically casts buffs for us every turn now the interesting part is that we are going to VC in uh, AS Mario and I only left in AS Mario in this this is actually my manifest team and the reason why is that AS Mario was definitely our last manifest we fought. One thing about AS Mario is even though I haven't really used her in any um, kind of a, uh, abilities or context, she still does have her regular four star moves, including Aurora Force. And so since we are trying to kind of just heal and protect, cast Aurora Force every turn, cast Rosa Lilia every turn, and basically just do small amounts of damage. If you want to bring a full stall team, I'm sure you can use Ultimate Defense Times 3 AS Radius, AS Sora, all the tanking unit in place. You can actually bring a whole tank team, including Pry and blah, 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 Bria. I mean, I don't think you have to do anything. All you have to do is stall enough turns in order to win. And so in this case, since we don't have to kill the unit, uh, Yakumo's fight, you can just kind of uh, bring some meme teams to kind of tank it all together. So. Other than that, um, we just have to convince them. And keep in mind that if you were stopped on this part, you do have to go to a different area to kind of um, get a picture of sorts in order to kind of trigger the scene. Otherwise, if you just go back to the area where you fought the first time, um, you will not be allowed to proceed. Okay, so the fight is over and that's pretty much it. Again, Loda is the same as the previous fight and then we will fast forward to the last fight. Thanks for watching.
All right, so we are at the final, final, final boss in the chapter. I did find it actually interesting that um, Yakumo is actually Yakumo. Other than that, this fight does rely on you looking at the uh, statuses as well as reading what it does here. So note that the, it has an aura with AF gauge is full. Everyone is weaker in magic resistance. And when the AF full, um, everyone gets pierce pierce barrier. So that will help you more than it because most of your team probably doesn't have a barrier as well as um, uh, you know, you're doing mostly magic attack. So I imagine in the true form of this, bringing a magic team will probably be of advantageous to us. That being said, I already have magic team here. We already know that whenever you release a unit such as Yakumo, um, the boss is usually vulnerable to it. Other than that, uh, we're going to, well, in this case, I didn't realize we shouldn't do an AF. I did a full AF. And it seemed very easy. You just kind of set up everything and you blast away the entire HP. And I thought the fight was over at the first fight. So, you know, nice and easy one turn AF, set up everything. Remember that with Efi in play, Risk Taker is on using Blood Contract with uh, Yakumo so you don't have to activate Lunatic for him. And by doing that, see, the boss actually kind of resets time, gives you a half bar AF right away and kind of heals everyone to max. And you can see that Ogre and Karm specifically said, do not use AF. So we'll use non-AF strategies to beat it down. I mean, again, we have extremely powerful units. Uh, do be careful about the status there. I was not aware of the sleep status. Um, not too difficult, especially with Tetra being able to recover that. Um, but if you are worried, you can use Moon Realm gear or other things like that. Other than that, with the deletion all set up, you got five hits. Again, is it already weak to it? We will get a full AF, but again, this is only the story character. And regardless, we have Efi allowing us to survive regardless. So um, if you don't, Again, make sure you have your dual debuffs up and probably have some sort of shield as well. If you don't use a magic team, be aware that you're not exploiting its weaknesses, which is okay, I guess, as well. Other than that, you just blast it into oblivion. It still recovers one more time, even though we didn't use the AF. So I'm not really sure how many times the boss will recover itself. I found in this case, it only recovers itself twice as long as you didn't use the AF. However, I'm not sure how many bars it's supposed to have or whether or not I kind of did things wrong. In this case, you can't drain your own AF anyways. And so we're just using non-AF attacks in order to bring it down. Keep in mind that if you did activate um, Efi as an attacker, you can use Ecophilia, but you really don't need to. I mean, look at how much damage it is. So we're already on the... Okay, so the first bar was an AF, which doesn't count. We've done two non-AF bar kills, HP kills and it's still alive. So that's what I mean by, I'm guessing it has like something like three, but I'm not 100% sure. That being said, I mean, we're not really facing any sort of massive amounts of damage or any sort of risk to us. Again, with uh, scam units like Efi, uh, you really don't have to worry about anything. And again, uh, just a reminder, if you do have both Yakumo and Monoka, you can have both sidekicks in play, one in the front, one in the back, and you can actually either rotate them and they both, both auras will take effect as long as the conditions are met. So in the case of, um, there we go. We finally wrecked uh, space time. And so I guess the third HP bar was all that was needed. Okay, so that was it. And again, um, not much else to see. You can watch the rest of the chapter. And then of course, after this, you will unlock the ability to do the true ending as well as play the mini game again to kind of raise your chap uh, level uh, for Yakumo from level 3 to level 2 to level 1 and get that KMS Almighty Power Grasta. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.
Thank <laughs> you. 